Well, hello everyone. Uh, first, let me put three things clear. I'm trying to not film any license plates because I'm too lazy to edit this video. And according to German laws, you cannot film any license plate. Second of all, and I need to rest pause, because right then and there was a car and a cyclist. I'm not a professional video maker, I'm not a professional YouTuber, so this video will look like shit and I can't change it. But I wanted to show you some uh, of the American, uh, of the European street signs and how they look like. Especially since they are so different from North American ones. So there's a video out there that explains perfectly why North American signs are so different from everyone else, or, uh, everywhere else around the world. But uh, you can watch that one and I will link it in the video description. But for now I want to bring down some basics. All signs with a red circle and the white inlay are forbidden something. Uh, in this case uh, you are not allowed to use the street unless you live here or you're visiting some, uh, someone here. It basically it prevents fruit traffic by motorbikes and cars uh, and unless you are Anlieger Frei which means you have, re you have actual business in the street. And right behind us you see another red circle with a 30 in it which is a speed limit of 30 kilometers per hour for the entire zone until this sign is uh, nullified. 30 kilometers uh, divided by 8 times 5 is roughly um, 32 by 8 is 4 times 5, 20 miles per hour. These two lovely signs uh, both are to prevent stopping here. The lower one prevents parking from that sign to towards me and the other one uh, co completely forbids stopping in the other direction. The general rule of the road is inside city limits, speed limit is 50 kmh, otherwise, uh, unless otherwise posted. The most fundamental traffic law at an intersection, if no other rules apply, it goes right before left. So if you come to an intersection and there are no traffic lights, yield signs or stop signs, then the traffic coming from the right has to go first and then you and that goes all the way around the circle because everyone has someone to their right. Then there are these tr triangle si uh, signs with the top and they are warning about uh, something that you should be aware of like this one here where it says here's a construction site. Yet another do not park here but here's an exception which is denoted in a white sign below it which says there are some markings on the road and inside those markings you are allowed to park. And this is such an end marking so my car can go until here and to the other side. Yet another forbidden sign, uh, trucks are not allowed to turn left here. The sign at the bottom, no stopping and uh, no parking, uh, short stops are allowed and the top one says you have one time right of way, so you don't need to concern with traffic from the right. So here we see a one-way street sign, uh, similar to the North American ones, except that cyclists are allowed to go both ways here. And beside that, there's a designated parking areas for a certain amount of time. And here we have the well-known stop sign in same form. So it can be easily recognized from the other side as well, because it's the only sign with that shape. And here you have the yield sign, which is also unique in its shape, because it's the only upside down triangle, which also makes it recognizable from the back side. And the sign below it basically shows you how the main road is going. So we are coming from this uh, tiny uh, road here, and the main road is coming from the left and making a turn here and there's another side road coming from the left. The main road here a bit washed out has exactly the same information where the main road goes long and where the side streets are coming from. If you're in the main road you always have the right of way. If you're leaving the main road it depends in which direction the main road goes and if you're turning left or right then the fundamental 
rule of uh, right before left uh, takes, comes into place. Here is the main road side from the other side and it also has the explanation where the uh, bicycle path for recreational purposes goes along. Parking is allowed here for two hours if you have a park schreiber. I don't know the English word for it. Basically, you uh, set your arrival time and they can check if you have left before the two hours. But it's only uh, during the Monday to Friday 11 to 5 p.m. hours. Otherwise, you can park here 24 hours. One of the main difference to North America is also that all street signs are posted before the intersection from the driver's point of view. But as you can see here from the behind, I can see from this side that this driver has to yield if he comes from up the hill. This pedestrian traffic light is only activated if I push this button and then only for a short time to allow me to cross. And just like a regular traffic light, it has red and green lights with little people in it. M -m 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 Max Headroom. Okay, here we can film a bit without bothering anyone. As I said, the most basic rule in Germany is when there's no street signs, right before left. Otherwise, there are things called main road, which are a yellow square on a tip. And they have the right of way before everyone else. Then we, of course, have traffic lights and um, other one-time right-of-way rules as well. We also have the roundabout. And ironically, everyone thinks they're in the roundabout. Uh, everyone who is in the roundabout has the right-of-way, even if they come from the left. As they always come from the left in Germany. But uh, that's not so. The roundabout sign, I will see if I can find one. Most of the time, I'd say 90% of the time, comes with a you have to yield sign as additional. And only then uh, has the uh, people uh, or the cars in the roundabout the right of way. I've never seen a roundabout without the sign. But technically, without the yield sign, the people in the roundabout do not have the right of way. It's a kind of weird, weird construct. And here everything is forbidden. No foot traffic, no cars, no nothing. So these small signs here that you see on lampposts and otherwise, they are for water mains and uh, construction workers. So they know where to find uh, the certain things in the ground that are not actually traffic signs. Behind that on the other way, on the other side, is a sign that denotes this small passage here as a footpath and cyclist path. And the reason why the bar is vertical means uh, both uh, pedestrians and cyclists are treated equally. If the bar is vertical, going from top to bottom, then it means uh, one to whatever is assigned to the left and the other to the right, so they don't crash in each other. But this one here is too small, so they just say, take care of each other, but you're both allowed. Here is a similar variant. Technically, it's only pedestrians, but cyclists are allowed to go here. And in the end, after the short passage, they have to yield to cross traffic, even if that's just pedestrians. So these warning of traffic lights come usually before on-demand traffic lights that are not always on. This is the case in this one. Or they come before construction sites, or where there are new traffic lights uh, where there weren't any before. Or maybe the traffic light is behind a bend or the forest and you can't see it uh, fast enough until you turn. And that's why there's a warning for a traffic light. Badly maintained but totally legit end of town sign, which means from here on out the speed limit goes up from 50 kilometers per hour to 100 kilometers per hour unless otherwise posted. And that's it from the other side. Here starts the town. Standard straight ahead main road sign and the U22 denotes a um, traffic detour in case there is some uh, traffic uh, incident otherwhere and they can announce on the radio if you want to uh, don't get stuck into traffic take the U22 and then it will lead you back to the autobahn 
and it comes from the Autobahn. And here's the roundabout with the yield sign. Pedestrians and bikers, yay, horses, nay. And since we are now outside Simply Limits, there is a warning that the yield sign will come in 150 meters because you are allowed to drive faster here and the roundabout will come much sooner than expected. These markings here on the trees are for hikers so they can follow certain paths that are laid out in their at the starting points or in certain guides and they can follow the color codings for their path. And here we are in the middle of either publicly or privately owned land. I don't know and I don't need to care because as long as I stick to this road which is only used for uh, forest workers and not for actual traffic, I'm on the safe side. Unless I run into a group of boars, but that's a different topic. Most parcels of public forest are rented out or loaned out, I'm not sure if it's the right word, to a forester who is a wood uh, forest man and his, uh, he, he gets the forest but his task is to uh, keep uh, the population of um, any group of animals to a reasonable level uh, to make sure that there is no uh, danger of wood fires and so on and in exchange he gets the hunting rights uh, for this piece of the of the forest but uh, Everything needs to be in balance. He can't just kill all the animals. It's his job to keep uh, the populations at the stable between hunted animals and hunting animals. And it's also the first job to dispose of animals that were uh, killed by in car crashes when they cross uh, forest roads. Not this one here, I mean actual roads that go through the forest. Uh, but uh, then you have, uh, just like everywhere else, sometimes animal incidents where a deer tries to cross the road and the car is just a bit faster. Here in the forest it's much more easy to film, but way less traffic signs, even though there are some. But uh, German privacy laws uh, forbid that you film any traffic plates and uh, publish them on the internet because uh, you are invading that uh, car's owner's privacy because basically you reveal when that car was where. And the same goes uh, for people's faces. There's such a law that you can film in public places, for example, uh, the Cathedral of Cologne. And if there are people in the shot, that's totally okay. But uh, that's because they are part of the scenery. But you should never go in Germany and film in someone's faces uh, like these um, prank videos or gacha videos that you often see in the US. Uh, in the US you may get uh, punched in the face, but in Germany you, you also get in trouble with the law if you try to do that. And here you have an actually fenced off area in the forest, which means definitely private property and the fence makes it clear, do not go there. At the very beginning we talked about the no parking, no stopping signs. The main difference is uh, both look pretty similar. One has an X through it and one just a slash. The one with a slash is the no parking sign, which means you can halt or stop there for up to three minutes and unload and load your car. But everything over three minutes is considered parking. And the one with the X through it is no stopping here at all. Roads like this you will find uh, a lot in the countryside in Germany. They are mainly for uh, farm services uh, where the tractors go along and other farm cars, trucks and so on. But you will re very rarely ever find any actual traffic on roads like this. So here you have a grass area, not seeded this year and also not here. but. Uh, on the other side of town, we had uh, lots of cornfields, uh, so what we call mice, uh, but also uh, the rye and wheat and so on, and cabbage. 
So these signs tell cyclists how far it is in every direction to the next towns over. And here you have a small bridge in the background and that's why only uh, cars until 3.5 tons are allowed here, no bigger trucks. In 200 meters this road is closed for all kind of motorized traffic and there's no turning point for trucks so you better stop uh, turn around here if you are a big vehicle. In the south of Germany you will see them a lot uh, especially along the old trade routes which are now usually smaller streets and not big streets and you will also find uh, chapels in the middle of nowhere that were sponsored by uh, some a medicine or something or other. This street is a dead end for cars but there's an exit on the other side for pedestrians and cyclists. Please let tractors and other farm equipment pass and share the road with them. Uh, on this road uh, only only farm equipment and pedestrians and cyclists are allowed to drive um, so no cars go through here that aren't the farm equipment. If you can see the tiny orange spot just above the horizon and before the mountains that's actually a castle that's get, that gets lit uh, at night. It's castle ruin not a, not a, a functioning building. What you are seeing there uh, blinking on the horizons are actual um, windmills for power production. Each windmill uh, here in the area is 140 meters high, which is roughly 400 feet. This blue sign here is also not exactly a traffic sign, but it has an interesting history. And it's about the last sign I'm going to show because it's getting dark, as you can see. First off, here is such a chapel. Let me see if I can at least catch it without the, traf uh, without the flashlight. No, it's too dark. But uh, the sign I just showed you there is, is the Jakobsweg. The Jakobsweg is a pilgrimage path uh, for Christian pilgrims and comes all the way uh, from somewhere in Eastern Europe. I don't know exactly where. It goes through here, goes through France to, and ends uh, in Spain. And every year people are walking either the entire Jakobsweg or just the final bits. A friend of mine uh, went the last thousand kilometers uh, last year. He's not religious, but he loves to hike. And they're walking this path and the entire length is about the width of the entire continental United States. And with this, uh, I will end this little discourse here. Have a great evening. One last thing though, the euro, oops, sorry, the euro and the dollar are currently equivalent and one gallon is 3.8 liters. So this is about uh, 6.8 dollars for a gallon of gasoline.